Hello Super Friends and welcome to DC TV Talk and in this episode we're going to be reviewing and breaking down Legends of Tomorrow Season 4 Episode 1, otherwise entitled The Virgin Gary. So let's discuss. And if you haven't seen this episode be sure to go check it out and then come back here because this review will be filled with spoilers. So here we go, we have the final Arrowverse show to premiere. It's a week late with Legends of Tomorrow but I guess that's just what we have to deal with with less episodes. But this is outside of Arrow, my most anticipated uh, season for the Arrowverse this year, just because Legends of Tomorrow has evolved into such an amazing, ridiculously hilarious, and just super fun show over the past three seasons, and season three I thought was outstanding. Like, season three, like, put it this way, last season I think Legends of Tomorrow was hands down just the best show of the Arrowverse, like heads and shoulders above the other three. So I was very much excited, and I have to say, this season premiere, season 4, did not let me down one ounce. So we have the opening of this episode, which is nothing too special. Like, this episode is basically just them fixing the final anachronism that they had to deal with. And it leads into a party scene where we actually see that the legends are actually being celebrated by the Time Bureau for actually getting rid of all the anachronisms in the history timeline. I thought that was really nice, actually, for the Time Bureau to actually recognize the legends. And I don't know if this was meant to be like this, but it almost felt like a Star Wars reference because all the legends get these badges and these medals for doing what they did. It almost felt like a Star Wars reference. I don't know if it was intended to be a Star Wars reference, if I'm looking too much into it, but that's what it kind of felt like to me. But it was just nice to see the legends actually being recognized by the Time Bureau instead of being hunted by them like they usually are. Now, one of the things I loved most about this episode was all of the stuff with Sarah and Ava. I thought this was really well handled. This is one of the most realistic relationships I think the Arrowverse has ever done. It's really well established and it was set up so well in Season 3. And I like the fact in Season 4, they are truly together now and they've just gone for it. And I think it's great. You know, the scenes with them now living together is really nice. I mean, unfortunately, they are interrupted by Constantine, who I'll get onto Constantine in a minute. But just seeing this relationship of Sarah and Ava, especially the scene at the end between the two, it's just really nice and it's just, again, it works so well it feels so real and I think that, you know, Katie Lotz and Jess McCallan who is of course a series regular now this season they're just doing such a good job with it and the writing is so well, it's just again so well realised and it's very nuanced and I just think it works so well for these two characters I'm so glad that Jess McCallan is a series regular for this season because she deserves it now, the main thing that's sort of going on in this episode is that there seems to be some kind of thing going wrong in history down at Woodstock, and this is just incredible. Everything that happens at Woodstock is absolutely hysterical. I mean, they all turn up there. You have Ray and Zari who are looking for Nora, and then Sarah and Nate and Mick show up, and it's just, it's really hilarious. Now, there is some actually really cool camera work when it first shows all the legends kind of meeting at, at uh, Woodstock. It has all these different, like, moving camera shots, and it's really interesting, actually. Uh, something I like to pick up on, but what is just hilarious about this is the scene where the unicorn shows up. We have Mick doing a very hilarious classic Mick line of, damn horses, fireproof, and I just thought that was absolutely hysterical. And then we have, like, all the legends get super high on this, like, you know, fairy dust that the unicorn spits out. And there's this amazing moment where Nate, under the influence of this drug, looks at Mick and sees his father, who I'll get onto as well. And Mick sees Axel. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. Axel being the dead rat, if you remember from season three. Mick had a pet who then died, like a pet rat, and there was this big funeral for it. It was like this massive emotional scene last season. And the fact he's seeing it, and he's hugging Nate, thinking it's Axel, saying I love you and things. It's just hysterical. This is why I watch Legends. This is why I love Legends. Just the ridiculousness of it you know any other show would not get away with stuff like this and i feel like that's a phrase i'm going to say a lot this year when i'm reviewing each of these episodes but just no other show on air would get away with stuff like this other than legends of tomorrow and i love it for it now i mentioned nate's father just then and i will talk about that as well uh, the scenes between nate and his father were actually quite well handled i was very surprised now if you remember back to my sort of legend season 4 comic-con coverage i was saying i was very surprised that they were actually giving nate a storyline this season because i thought kind of after amaya left i was kind of thinking well what's he really going to do and i don't think the writers are really going to give him anything but they're actually giving him some backstory we're actually going to see his father which is really nice and um you know, obviously his father is played by the wonderful Tom Wilson, who played Biff Tannen in the Back to the Future series. 
And it's so awesome seeing Tom Wilson. He's actually playing it a lot more serious than what I thought he would. But I actually quite like that because, again, it's subverting my expectations. And I think he did a fantastic job. And there's also a really nice moment between uh, Nate and Mick at Woodstock where basically they're discussing basically Nate's daddy issues. And it was actually quite... And it rang quite true because of Mick's experience with his father. You know, we kind of explored that last season with Mick and his father in Vietnam, where he's kind of saying, "Did he hit you? Did he burn you? Did he try and did he dress up as a clown to scare the hell out of you?" And things like that. And obviously, again, it is played for laughs, but there is a you know ring of truth there. And Nate is talking about how his father basically was just emotionally detached from him, and we do see that. And this all culminates really nicely at the end because we do see Nate actually go back to his father with a can of beers and says, "You know, should, do you want to want to have a beer with me?" And, you know, it was just a nice way to end it. And I'm definitely excited to see how they develop. Obviously, we know that um, that Tom Wilson's character of Hank Haywood is going to be working for the Pentagon. He's going to be working for the government. So we're going to see that explored a little bit more. And obviously, this is going to be Nate's sort of storyline. Nate isn't going to be as connected with the Legends this season, which I'm totally fine with. So I think this is a good storyline. I love Tom Wilson. He's fantastic. You know, I love Biff. Back to the Future some of my favorite films. So I'm completely down for this storyline. And of course, a huge thing about Legends of Tomorrow Season 4 is Mr. John Constantine, who is of course also a series regular this season. His introduction into this episode was fantastic. I mean, like I said, he's in that opening scene with him and with Sarah and Ava. But then when he actually joins the team to actually take on this unicorn thing in Woodstock, I mean, Constantine overall in this episode is just fantastic. I mean, I don't need to comment on Matt Ryan because everyone knows how great he is as Constantine. But it's just he adds such a presence and such a different kind of personality to the rest of the legends because he's so different and he's so dynamic in comparison to everybody else. Because, you know, each of the legends are very individual, but we've kind of gotten used to all of them now at this point. Whereas this is like a completely fresh dynamic to bring onto the team and onto the show. And I just think Constantine's going to do so much for the show this season. And I, I wonder if he'll stick around for season five. I doubt it heavenly, but, you know at least we've got him now for season four and i think he's just gonna do so much and in this first episode if this episode is a hint of anything that's what's to come i'm loving it now while constantine is trying to hatch a plan to catch this unicorn he comes up with all these different things he needs and eventually the final thing he needs is a virgin and this is where gary comes in uh gary is just a treasure i mean <laughs> he's so great um but seeing gary here you know basically you find out gary is a virgin there's a lot of great lines between Constantine and Gary about what they may have gotten up to in between seasons three and four. And we see that uh, Gary has to kind of bait this unicorn. And he actually gets his, he gets his nipple bitten off at the end, which is ridiculous. And you just see all these different things going on between Gary and also Constantine. And also Constantine actually in this scene is really cool because you actually get to see him do some magic stuff. Like there's some really awesome magic stuff on display here with him. And I really like his comment as well. He says, he says you know, that's some grade A magic right there. And it's very true. It's really awesome to see Constantine just, you know, go at it with the magic. Um, visually, it looks very similar to what you might see in Doctor Strange. It's quite similar to, you know, a lot of the special effects that are in Doctor Strange, but seeing it here, you know, in, with Legends of Tomorrow and Constantine, it's just a really cool thing to see, and again, the way it's used is really interesting. Now, they do hint in this episode that there may be a relationship brewing between Rey and Nora. Now, this is something I predicted. Whenever they announced that Nora... Um, or Courtney Ford as Nora Dark is going to be a series regular. I said, I guarantee you that Ray and Nora end up together. Not only because they kind of planted the seeds a little bit last season, but also because uh, Brandon Routh, who plays Ray Palmer, and also Courtney Ford, who plays Nora Dark, they are actually married in real life, if you don't know. So it was just kind of like a thing that's going to happen. It's just obvious. And again, in this episode, they really do kind of plant the seeds and hint towards that that is going to happen. Uh, there's a scene where, you know, in Ray's hallucination, when he's on the drugs, or not, not the drugs, but on the unicorn dust, uh, he actually sees Nora and starts kissing her, even though he's actually kissing a tree, but it's still, you know, he still thinks he's kissing Nora. So, you know, that's going to come. Although Nora isn't technically in this episode, we will see her show up as a, in a series regular position, and I guarantee you by the end of this season, Ray and Nora will be together. Now, one of the reasons I love Legends so much is while it's so ridiculous and over the top and has all these fantastically hilarious moments, it, it's never really afraid to take a step away from that for just a minute to really focus on some emotional stuff. And we get that in this episode. We get to see Rey actually be taken to a park with Zari and Zari actually shows him 
his mother, or her mother, and also, you know, a younger Zari, who were actually living in Washington, D.C. in 2018 before the MetaHuman Act came into, you know, came into, uh, into fruition. And it was just a really nice touching scene. I think, you know, um, I really think the actress who plays Zari, I really can't remember her name off the top of my head. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I can't remember her name. Um, Tala Ashe, that's her name. Uh, Tala Ashe, I think she did a fantastic job with the emotional stuff. Like, she was really giving it her all. And again, it was just a really nice emotional scene. Now, I do have a slight complaint with it, is that it did feel a little bit out of left field. Like, it did feel, like, a bit random. Be like, you know, Zari kind of comes in and says, oh, hey, let me show you something, and then we kind of go to this scene. And obviously, it's because they were in 2018. They were in modern day. Uh, and this is obviously, Zari knew that she was living in America at that time. It just felt a little bit detached, but it was still a really nice scene overall. And just a really great emotional beat that took us away from the comedy just for a minute. So we then see Sarah go to John to actually recruit him onto the Legends, because obviously they're going to have to be dealing with all these magical stuff, and John is obviously an expert in that. And he actually refuses to join. He actually says, no, I, you know, I'd rather just stay here. I can't, you know, I can't, you know, I'd rather stay here than join up with you guys and stay with you lot. And, uh, you know, he doesn't. He just kind of stays there. And this then leads into the final scene of the episode, which is going to be kind of like a setup for what I assume is the villain. We see Constantine get thrown around a bit by some magic. And uh, somebody smashes the mirror and in blood writes, I'm coming for you, John. Now, this is obviously some kind of setup for a villain or, you know, the villain of the season. We don't actually know what the villain is of this season, which I actually quite like. I think that's interesting. Um, personally, I don't know if this is the main villain, if this is like the big bad or if this is just like one of the threats. But personally, I feel like this is that werewolf character they were on about because this werewolf character, like when he's being, when, Ro uh, when John is being kind of wrestled around, he says, get your filthy paws off me pause so i feel like you know you know pause werewolf it matches up in that sense so i feel like this is that werewolf character that the legends were casting so i guess we'll have to wait and see maybe he'll show up next episode or the episode after that maybe episode after that you know we just have to kind of wait and see but obviously this is very interesting that this villain in particular is going to have a specific connection to john constantine and again making constantine that bit more relevant this season Overall, I thought this was a fantastic start to Legends of Tomorrow this season. Like I said, Legends is my second most anticipated of this season, just under Arrow. I think it's just, like, season three left me on such a high, and I love, I just love seeing it. And I thought this was a great start. Other than, like I say, that Zari scene, although it was great, it was a little bit detached, just a little bit on the side, really. And also, I was a little bit sad that, you know, we didn't really get to see Wally in this episode. I really hoped that we were going to get Wally in this. Just, just one scene of Wally, him leaving. Um, because, you know, they just kind of name drop him and say, oh yeah, he's taking a break. Um, and he's just kind of gone and traveled the world again. And it's like, yeah, okay, I would have liked to have seen, you know, Keenan Lonsdale reprise Wally just, just for a scene. Um, but other than that, I think this was a great, great start. Such an entertaining episode. So many laugh out loud moments and great emotional moments. And all the relationship stuff between Sarah and Ava is so well realized. Constantine is such a good addition to this show. Gary continues to be a treasure. And just everything about this is really exciting all this setup you know with these potential magical creatures that are going to be coming in seeing tom wilson as hank haywood is amazing there's just so many great things about this season that this episode sets up i'm just so excited to see where the rest of the season goes so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a like it'll help me out a lot and share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves dc tv and get them to join the community and as always guys please subscribe for your latest content on supergirl the flash legends of tomorrow and arrow and with all that said guys i hope to see you again in my next video